Hi friends, I am myself Nagaya Sirman. I am working as a student professor. In this video, I am going to explain about microprocessor for CSC graduates. This is the first video of module 1. That's why it is mentioned 1 of 3. The main objective of this video is history of microprocessor, block diagram of microprocessor, segment registers, and uh, flag registers. First, we will look on history of microprocessor. History of microprocessor. In this, we will come to know that which are the microprocessor are developed from starting 1971 to up to today's. So, I listed some of the microprocessor from 8008 to 8088. We will look on what are the features comes under each microprocessors. The first feature when it is introduced. The 8008 is introduced in 1972. Next, 8080, 1974, 8085, 1976, 8086, 1978, 8088, 1979. The next feature, which technology is used in those processors? In the first processor, 8008, the first technology they used, PMOS, P-layer metal oxide semiconductor. PMOS stands for P-layer metal oxide semiconductor. In 8080, they used next technology that is NMOS technology, that is N layer metal oxide semiconductor. In 8085, also NMOS, 8086, also NMOS, 8088, also NMOS technology. Then, how many transistors are available in each chip? In 8008 chip, it contains 3000 transistors. In 8080, 4500. In 8085, 6500. In 8086, 29000. In 8088, 29000. Then, number of pins. What is the size of the IC? Total number of pins available in the IC. 8008 contains 18 pin. 8080 contains total 40 pin. 8085 also 40 pin, 8086 and 8088 also 40 pin IC. Then what is the physical memory size? In 8008, the physical memory size is 16 KB. Physical memory in the sense the RAM size, actual size of the memory that is RAM size 16 KB. In 8080 it is 64 KB, 8085 64 KB. In 8086 and 8088 also 64 KB of RAM. Then virtual memory that is secondary memory of hard disk that is called as virtual memory. In case of 8008 to up to 8088 there is no virtual memory available. Then data bus. This is the important feature of the each processor. Data bus. The 8008 having 8 bit data bus. The meaning of 8 bit in the sense we can transmit only 8 bit of data through the data bus. It will communicate through only 8 bit of data. Similarly, in 8080, it is 8 bit. 8085 also 8 bit. 8086 is 16 bit processor. Before 8086, all the processor are 8 bit. 8086 only 16 bit processor. And 8088 is also 8 bit. We can observe the main differences between 8086 and 8088. Almost all are features are similar only the data bus is different in 8086 16 bit in 8088 is 8 bit data bus next address bus so here if you want to access the memory in the processor we need address so the actual address size of each processor will be differ in 8008 the address bus size will be 8 8 bit data bus 8 bit address bus. only 8 bit address will be there so through which we can access the memory. Then in 8080, it is 16 bit address bus. 8085 also 16 bit, but 8086 and 8088 are 20 bit address bus. The 20 bit address bus, in the sense, through 20 bit address, we can send the address to the particular memory. We can access the particular memory address that is the address bus. We'll continue with this uh, history of the microprocessor from 80862 up to Pentium Pro processor. We already discussed uh, 8086. 
the 8086 is uh, introduced in 1978 then 80286 1982 80386 1985 80486 1989 pentium 1993 pentium pro in 1995 then technology so 86 and uh, 80286 and used NMOS technology 80386 and 80486 used CMOS technology complementary metal oxide semiconductor CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor then in Pentium by CMOS in Pentium Pro BM CMOS technology they used then number of transistors in 8086 the number of transistors available 29,000 in 80286, 1,34,000. Next, in 80386, 2,75,000. 80486, 1.2 million. Pentium, 3.1 million. Pentium Pro, 5.5 million. Why I represented here number of transistor? Based on the number of transistor, the size of the memory also increases. The capacity of the uh, processor will be increases. Then number of pins. So 8086 is 40 pin IC. 80286 68 pin IC. 80386 132 pin. 80486 168 pin. Pentium 273 pin. Pentium Pro 387 pin. Then physical memory. What is the size of physical memory? That is physical memory in the sense RAM. So 8086 having one megabyte of memory. 80286 16 megabyte of memory 80386 4 gigabyte 80486 4 gigabyte pentium 4 gigabyte pentium pro 64 gigabyte of memory then virtual memory in 8086 there is no virtual memory 80286 having 1 gigabyte of memory 80386 64 terabytes 80486 64 terabytes Pentium and Pentium Pro also 64 terabytes of virtual memory then data bus 8086 16 bit data bus 80286 16 bit 80386 up to Pentium it is 32 bit and also Pentium Pro also 32 bit processor from 80386 to up to Pentium Pentium Pro Pentium second Pentium 3, Pentium 4, all having 32 bit data bus. Then address bus 8086 20 bit address bus, 80286 24 bit address bus, 80386 up to Pentium it is 32 bit and Pentium Pro 36 bit address bus. After this Pentium Pro, we have Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4. Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4 are 32 bit processor. The speed of the processor will be increases compared to Pentium, Pentium Pro in case of Pentium 3 and Pentium Pro. Next, we will look on to the architecture of the 8086 microprocessor. It is 8086 microprocessor. I am concentrating on only 8086 microprocessor. This is the block diagram of 8086 microprocessor it mainly consists of two units the first unit is called as execution unit the second is called bus interfacing unit this part left side part this part will be execution unit this part will comes for the bus interfacing unit under execution unit the main parts are this is the data register that is general purpose registers we have ax bx cx dx pointer registers sp BP stack pointer, base pointer, index registers, source index, destination index, then it has internal bus for communication within the internal blocks. Then we have temporary registers. After the operation of ALU, that is arithmetic and logical unit, the temporary data will be stored in the register. So that is part is temporary registers. Then we have flags. So these are the blocks comes under execution unit. In bus interfacing unit, we have again registers like segment registers, port segment, data segment, stack segment, extra segment, and one more instruction pointer. Then we have the bus control logic unit, 
then instruction queue these are belongs to bus interfacing unit this the main function of this execution unit is it gives the information to the bus interfacing unit from where to fetch the data where is the data is available that information is given to the bus interfacing unit by execution unit what, then what will happens bus interfacing unit will fetch the data that data is given to the execution unit then execution unit what it does it decodes and executes the instruction normally if, if you want to execute one instruction it uh, takes three cycles that is fetching decoding and execution operation so fetching will be done by bus interfacing unit and uh, decoding and execution part will be done by execution unit now we'll see uh, each block what is the operation of each block in this architecture the first execution unit under execution unit we have general purpose registers flag registers pointers and index registers arithmetic and logical unit under bus interfacing unit segment registers instruction pointer address generator and bus control and instruction queue now we will see what are the uh, parts of execution unit in the execution unit the first part is general purpose register is also called as programming model the uh, registers available in the 8086 that part is called, is also called as the programming model first general purpose register is ax this is also called as accumulator all the registers in the uh, 8086 processor are 16 bit so ax is also 16 bit register this 16 bit registers are divided into two bytes one is higher byte another one is lower byte because this ax loads 16 bit of data lower 8 bit data is called as lower byte of data that will be stored in the al ax is split into ah plus al in al lower 8 byte lower 8 bit data will be loaded and higher 8 bit will be loaded in the ah why it is called as accumulator in some of the upcode the operation of the result will be stored in the accumulator itself in the ax itself that's why it is called as accumulator it loads the data of result accumulator then it is also used for data transfer really use uh, in the arithmetic and logical unit operation then second general purpose register is dx this is also called as base register why it is called as base register in case of addressing mode we are generating the base address with the help of bx register that is the reason it is called as base register it is also 16 bit register it is also split into two 8 bits lower 8 bit called it as bl higher 8 bit will be loaded in the bh lower byte will be stored in bl higher byte will be stored in bh register then cx register normally in the programming part of the 8086 processor we are using cx register as a counter especially uh, in case of loop instruction uh, if you are going for the programming part uh, we have the loop of code in that case is cx counter cx register acts as a count register so while explaining loop instruction i will tell you how to use cx register so it is also 16 bit register this 16 bit again split into two bytes lower byte and higher byte in lower byte cl will be there higher byte it will be loaded in the ch byte in the sense one byte equals to eight bits lower eight bit will be loaded in cl higher eight bit will be loaded in ch so total 16 bit eight plus eight 16 bit register then dx register data register why it is called as data register in case of uh, interfacing we are taking the data from the external device and also we are sending the data to the external devices in that cases we are using dx register for the loading the data that is the reason it is called as data register it is of 16 bit register again it is split into dh and dl lower bit lower 8 bit will be loaded in dl higher 8 bit will be lo loaded in the dh register and next another use of this dx register suppose if you are multiplying two 16 bit numbers then our result will be 32 bit in that 32 bit the lower 16 bit will be loaded in ax register higher 16 bit will be loaded in the dx register if you are performing multiplication of 16 bit in that case also we are using the dx register and even in the division operation also then index registers 
first one source index why it is called as source index normally if you want to find the memory location of the source point if you want to transfer the data from one point to another point you are calling the first memory location as the source location in that source location we are indicating si register that is the reason it is called as source index what is the use of this source index uh, if you want to calculate physical address uh, in that case along with data segment registers we are using source index register and in case of uh, uh, string operations we, we can increment the location si easily by loading the data in the si location that is the another use of si register it will we can easily understand while uh, explaining program how we can use si registers just now we can remember si register is used to find the physical address along with the data segment similarly we have destination index di this di we are using especially in the extra segment uh, to find the memory locations then pointer registers we have bp that is base pointer it points the data in the stack segment and also it is used to find the offset address in case of stack segment then stack pointer it pointing the program stack bp points the stack segment data in the stack segment the stack pointer pointing the program stack it is also used to find the physical address in stack segment then segment registers we have four segment registers code segment data segment extra segment and stack segment so here i have the effective or offset registers i already told some registers we are used as offset register to calculate the physical address along with the segment register so if you want to calculate a physical address worry if suppose if you are using ip uh, instruction pointer in the instruction then this ip will be added with code segment register so the code segment register will be added with ip then we can generate the physical address then as si and dibx dx are by default offset registers along with data segment si and di is using with extra segment register then spbp stack pointer base pointer are adding with stack segment to generate the physical address you can see here the physical address formula physical address that is 20 bit address that is nothing but our memory of the uh, microprocessor is a 20 bit address bus to access that 20 bit address we need to calculate the physical address so the physical address is equals to segment register address multiplied by 10h plus effective address so here segment register address will be 16 bit because i already told all the registers are 16 bit so it, it can load only 16 bit address and effective address also these registers also uh, effective registers or offset registers also capability to load only 16 bit address so the 16 bit address is multiplied by 10 h so then it will be what happens 20 bit address plus effective address 16 bit so it will be 20 plus 16 that is uh, 20 bit in that you are adding effective address so totally 20 bit address will be generated by the physical address formula then we can access easily particular uh, segments in the memory locations so we can see our uh, one megabyte of memory in that one megabyte of memory some of the part is divided into four segments uh, we have data segment code segment stack segment extra segment each segment size will be 64 kilobytes total i have one megabyte of memory 8086 microprocessor in that some portion is divided into segments four segments data segment code segment stack segment extra segment data segment 64 kilobytes Core segment also 64 kilobyte size, stack segment also, extra segment also 64 kilobytes of size. So data segment size it starts from 2000H to 2FFFH. So this is 2000H. It is 20 bit. How it is 20 bit? Each uh, uh, digit will be 4 bit in the binary. 4 into 5 total 20 bit address. So data segment address starts from 2000H to to FFFFH for code segment it is 3000H to 3FFFFH and stack segment 
ZF is 0 and SF is 0. Then pipelining operation. See before 8086 processor, uh, we have 8008, 8080 or 8085. In that, there is no pipelining operation. What is this pipelining operation? I already told to execute one instruction, it carries out three cycles that is fetching, decoding, and executing. So, if you want to execute two instructions, so totally six cycles is required. So, that is without pipelining operation. Earlier processors, if you want to execute two instructions, they will take six cycles for the two instructions. But in case of 8086 uh, uh, microprocessor, uh, we have the pipelining technology in that uh, we are executing the instructions uh, in the short period. You can see here in the first instruction that is it will fetch in the first cycle fetching decoding and executing first instruction while decoding the first instruction we are fetching the next instruction so then while executing the first instruction we are decoding the second instruction while executing the second instruction we are decoding the third instruction as well as fourth instruction is fetched so what happens here we can save the number of cycles to execute number of instructions so that is while decoding particular instruction we are fetching the another instruction so we can say one one cycle like that suppose if you consider two instructions to execute two instructions if you used a pipelining operation we required only four cycles but without pipelining operation we need total six cycles see fetch decode execute fetch decode execute total six cycles is required without pipeline but if you used Pipelining operation for two instructions to be executed, total it requires four cycles. So that is the advantage of pipelining operation that is done in 8086 processor. Thank you for watching. If you like, share it and also subscribe. And if you have any comment, please inform. Thank you once again.